Hi, it's Janine Vosper from Speech Perfect, back with you and with Moana Robinson from Be Style for Life. Our expert today is Barbara Clifford, and she is the time tamer. And she's also a time management strategist and a stress management practitioner. practitioner. I know, it, it was well. a fair bit of mouthful, and I, I think I've got it now. One of the things that Barbara is absolute expert on and is going to be able to give us some, a whole lot of information that's going to be so valuable at this time is how to deal with change. And the world is in this massive state of change at the moment. And I think anything that we can pick up and any information that we can grab onto and be able to apply to reduce the stress in our life is is wonderful so thank you barbara thank you for joining us thanks thank you for having me how do we deal with change well, yeah. <laughs> so look i think one thing that's common for all of us is that oh, we just lost moana but that's okay we've yeah, we can keep going yeah no, absolutely <laughs> probably the internet that's dropped out one of the things that is comment that's the same for all of us is change that's inevitable everything changes all the time but the research has shown that people who are the most resilient emotionally resilient are comfortable with change they embrace change they they feel comfortable with it so if we can Mindy's back. Hi, Mindy. Hi, hey, Mindy. Hi. We're, in the, we're in the middle of Barbara's interview with about change. We're learning all about change here, which is important. Hi. And we've just sort of thrown her off track, but go back to it again. <laughs> hey, this is And exactly, there's some change. <laughs> exactly what I was talking about is okay. rolling with the punches and being able to adapt with change. Now, one of the things that we are seeing in this kind of environment is a type of stress called anticipatory stress. So worrying about the okay. what ifs, what's going to happen, what's happening in the future. And a lot of people are feeling anxiety around that environment and not feeling comfortable with that change. So the number one, the most important thing is, and this is what all of the counsellors, psychologists, psychiatrists, are, are, it's a common thread in the advice that's being put out there about mental well-being is focusing on what's within our control at the moment that's the number one thing is just focusing on that there's a great the serenity prayer which i can ne never remember off by heart it's used by alcoholics anonymous for a very long time and the prayer goes along the lines of god grant me the wisdom to know the to know what's within my control and what's not and and to, to be able to tell the difference it's a very, very, most people know it's a very common prayer. So here's another tip that was developed by a psychiatrist that's incredibly powerful. It's, I know, disclaimer, I'm not a counsellor, psychiatrist, psychologist. I'm a stress management practitioner. I do stress management coaching. But this tool is incredibly powerful. I'm not trained in cognitive brain therapy either, but it's this is the principle. And basically what we're doing is is rewiring our brain to operate differently we're tricking our brain we're hacking our brain a common emotion or a common feeling or sensation that we'll have at the moment is anxiety and we'll even be saying to ourselves oh what if i'm feeling anxious we'll have that inner dialogue with ourselves and so what our brain does is seek out evidence for why you should feel like that. It's like it's qualifying that thought or that belief. Yes, you should be anxious because of this. And what about this? And what about this? Media stuff doesn't help. No. So what we need to do is actually say, I'm excited. And it sounds crazy to actually do that. But if you think about a roller coaster ride, if you've been on the roller coaster, where if you, have you guys been on a roller coaster? It's my favourite thing in the world to do. I have been on roller coasters yes. everywhere. Okay, I love, not, love, love, love roller coasters. Does not surprise me. Does not surprise <laughs> me at all. So a roller coaster is, oh my God, I'm really scared. Wee, this is fun. I'm excited. Oh my God, I'm really scared. Wee, this is fun. So it's a, it's a combination of anxiety and excitement because they kind of sit on the same spectrum so when we say i'm excited we shift our thinking process so anxiety is fear-based and going in and trying to protect yourself going in inwards where when you say i'm excited it, it's outward trajectory and what happens is our brain searches for evidence of well, why are you excited 
And what that does is allow our mind to open up to opportunity and look for evidence of why it should be excited. And what it does in this environment is open you up to the flexibility of change, of alternative options, of solutions, of where the benefits are in this difficult situation that you're in. So it's an incredibly powerful tool if you start just having that as a mantra, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited, your brain will seek out the evidence for that. Oh, that's such a powerful tool to use because it does. It's, it's, it's a completely different word. I know I use it with people doing public speaking as well, is to use that word excited rather than being fear, fearful. And one of the things you said about being out of control, and I know that when I'm uh, about last week, it, it was for me, I had a conference to reorganize. I had a retreat that we're running overseas to figure out what we're going to do with that. And as we know, with, this, the, with the virus and the shutdown, every single day is a different answer. And I had five workshops. I had a whole lot of online training, a whole lot of stuff to restructure. And I couldn't make decisions. And that's so unlike me to not be, I normally can just go, that's the answer. And I was talking to Moana and she said, it's because you're used to being in control. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh yeah, okay. I can't control that. So my focus since then has been on what I can control. Yeah, it's a really, it's a really, really good point. Here's Mo, she's coming Here's Mo, back. Mo's coming back. We, met, we, mentioned, Mo. we mentioned your name. So we, we, you came back on. We just... Barbara's been talking about being excited rather than being fearful and I mentioned that I said to you the other day about not being able to make decisions and not being in control. And yes. I think that's where a lot of people are sitting at the moment, isn't it? That everything seems to be out of control and every single day has got a different answer to things. And, yeah. and we're just not sure of what's going mm. to happen tomorrow. Yes. And I yeah. think the other thing, Janine, that's really uh, important, what you've identified is that when we are in a state of stress, it's difficult, our brain doesn't function the same way. And so one of the things that is really difficult to do is make decision and uh, also to be able to take a course of action. Now more than ever, it's important to find coaches and there's all of us here coach and provide service in some capacity. So there is so much support just to have someone outside looking in to give you a different viewpoint because when you're stressed, it's people do that's when people do irrational things mm. and you, you look at them and go oh my, what are they doing but they're operating in a space of, of stress and they're not thinking rationally able to make sensible decision oh, absolutely any any questions mindy at all anything that you want to I'm ask just, barbara or comment on yourself just that last bit actually about being in that point of stress how how do you remove yourself from that stress and try and make a conscious decision. How do we know we're in stress and we're making a silly decision? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> and I think the, the most important thing around that is that stress is different for everybody. So what when you're stressed is different to when I'm stressed. For example, and I know Janine will understand this, is that for some people, the thought of getting on stage or just speaking like this or speaking in front of three people, they wouldn't be able to sleep for three days. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else would go like me or Janine or Moana or you, we go speaking in front of a thousand people. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, one experience can be stressful for one person and not for another. So we each experience stress in different ways. The key is to identify what your own personal triggers are. And once again, they're different for everybody. Some people will get sweaty palms. I, I get tight in my chest and tight in my shoulders. Most of us will have an increased heart rate. They are signs that we are stressed. There's a whole range of things, not being able to sleep at night, not being able to shut off your brain, affected digestive system, weight gain, uh, not being able, loss of appetite. There's a whole range of things that are a sign that we are stressed. So it's those things to look for. But there are simple things like the tool that I just shared with you or just slowing down your breathing. Really slowing down your breathing will quickly alter you, take, shift you out of a state. Yeah. And taking yourself into a different environment is really good as well. Going outside if you can. Yeah, it's really, really powerful as Remove well. Remove yourself from the situation. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Change, change your scenery. Yeah. Just before we wrap up, 
Moana, did you want to add anything, say a question for Barbara at all? Uh, no, I'll be keen to watch this to find out what the tool is. <laughs> um, it's excited. You're excited. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, to me, like breathing is so important, isn't it? The deep, the proper type of breathing, like breathing 